the Chikaku in the past, the nuclear industry has seriously misled the American public about the safety risks and about the economics of nuclear power. Now that the accident at Three Mile Island has occurred, they've assured us that it's the first time there's been a major accident at a civilian nuclear power facility. Is that the truth? That statement is totally false. The government has been less than candid concerning the history of major accidents at nuclear installations. In fact, the Harrisburg accident marks at least the seventh major accident, including explosions and partial meltdowns at nuclear installations. For example, in Detroit, 1966, there was a partial meltdown which almost required the evacuation of one and a half million people from the city of Detroit. One, uh, two fuel bundles out of 105 fuel bundles melted down completely. The force of detonation of the reactor would have been about 20 tons of TNT, a small atomic bomb. That was the breeder reactor. Look at Alabama, 1975. There was a major fire which wiped out over half the backup systems. The water level descended dangerously low to about four feet above the reactor. The reactor core was almost exposed and we almost lost a good portion of Alabama in that accident. All right, Mr. Kaku, what about the claim that no one has been hurt or injured as the result of the operation of nuclear power plants? Can you briefly tell us, is that the truth? That's also incorrect. If you look at the recent government reports concerning the Three Mile Island, the government now concedes that one to 10 people will eventually die of cancer in the Three Mile Island area. Now that figure of one to 10 deaths does not include the workers who were exposed to maybe hundreds of times the normal dose. It does not include the radiation levels recorded for the first, second day. And it does not include other forms of radiation recorded at the site. So you see that that figure is probably on the low side. And the, the National Academy of Sciences has recently published a report stating that there will be 2,000 deaths due to cancer before the year 2000 due to the generation of nuclear power. Finally, the nuclear industry tells us that after Three Mile Island, they've learned their lesson, and now nuclear power plants will be safe. Can you briefly tell us, is that the truth? Well, we learned a few things at Three Mile Island, but just a few days ago at Oyster Creek, New Jersey, we almost had an instant replay of the Three Mile Island. The same operator error, the same re misreading of the gauges, the same failure of a valve, and in this site, the water levels again became dangerously low, about five feet above the core. Now, this is not to mention the nuclear waste program, which is also unsolvable. The nuclear waste program, okay, has come to a halt because we don't know what to do with the hundreds of tons of waste products. Each reactor produces about 30 tons per year. Mr. Kaku, I'm sorry I have to interrupt, but we've got to turn now to Mr. Nelson, who has some questions for you. Mr. Thank Nelson. you, Mr. Kaku. Mr. Kaku, you listed or you cited the seven serious accidents of nuclear power. Could you cite seven serious accidents with regard to coal or gas and oil or hydroelectric? There's no doubt that the generation of coal, okay, poses a serious health hazard. If you look at the casualty figures of black lung disease among miners, or if you look at the cave-ins, but there is a qualitative difference between coal and nuclear power, and that is that coal plants don't detonate like breeder reactors, oh, and coal plants fact, don't melt true? down. Uh, Mr. True? Nelson, let's let Mr. Kaku finish briefly, and then we'll go on to another question. So I you are correct in stating that there have been major accidents in, in coal-fired yes, plants and, and in coal mines. I wasn't thinking of coal mines so much as the deaths that occur because of respiratory problems. Estimated between two and 200 people die a year because of the use of coal. And there have been countless deaths, or at least countless explosions, gas asphyxi asphyxiations, accidents on the road because of gasoline. And of course, there have been numerous accidents with hydroelectric, haven't there? That's in fact, correct. There have been, in the number of people who have been killed because of those technologies number in the thousands. Isn't that true? That's correct. Well, but then, isn't this, isn't this basically the problem then, Mr. Kaku? Don't we have to, instead of focusing on nuclear energy, now everybody is familiar with Three Mile Island and the talk about the problems with radiation, with health hazards, mm -hmm. but don't we also have to talk about the health hazards and the risks with the other technologies? That's correct. If you look at uranium mining compared to coal mining, uranium mining, the miners have a casualty rate of about 5%. 
which is comparable to the casualty rate in the mining of coal. So you see that uranium miners do get flooded with uranium oxide particles into their lungs, which will eventually cause cancer. But of course we mine considerably less uranium, and again I emphasize that I was talking about the health of the general public. Let me talk now about the question of radiation. Do you think that there is a risk of radiation because of the ordinary operation of uh, nuclear power plants? That's correct. In the operation of nuclear power plants, you do have the emission of radioactive radon, argon, is it a health hazard? xenons. That's correct. It also, is. you have numerous spills. You have numerous small accidents, mm -hmm. about 2,800 accidents in the year 1977. Isn't it true, Mr. Kaku, that the amount of radiation that comes from a coal plant, not a coal mine, a coal plant, is larger than that from a nuclear plant? And if the Nuclear, nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC, had jurisdiction over the coal plants, their radiation standard is such that the coal plants would be shut down. As a matter of fact, Grand Central Station in New York couldn't get licensed. There's higher radiation there than coming from nuclear power plants. Isn't this Dr. true? Mr. Kaku, if you can, this will have to be a brief answer. Right. I think these figures are misleading, because if you take a look at the radon gas, there is a considerable amount of radon gas coming from coal mines. But I repeat, coal mines do not melt down in Class 9 accidents, requiring the evacuation of up to the state of Pennsylvania, according to government reports. Mr. Kaku, thank you very much for being with us in the afternoon. Appreciate it.